Hey everyone, welcome to my talk about OutSpaces, which is a co-created and open source citizen science project around sensory processing in autistic people. So what's the problem? It's that 90% of autistic people process sensory information differently from non-autistic people. And that means that many spaces are not designed with inclusion and accessibility in mind for them. That's spaces like schools or universities, workplaces, public transport, public spaces like parks, but also hospitals and waiting rooms. And it's a real community priority. Two of the top 10 most important research questions to autistic people include which environments are most appropriate in allowing people to have the best life outcomes, and also how sensory processing can be better understood. So this is where with OutSpaces we try to step in because our project aims to collect qualitative data to improve our understanding of sensory processing in the real world through an online system that allows people to collect these qualitative data by writing up their experience. We see an example here. It's about working in an office that can be difficult because there's hot desking, so you don't know where you're gonna sit. The lights are too bright and it's also too loud, so you can concentrate. And in addition to all of this, there's also the commuting, which is super stressful during peak hours. So what do we mean now for art spaces when we talk about citizen science? It means that we follow the disability rights motto of nothing about us without us. And it means that we co-create, co-design, and co-own our outputs of art spaces with the autistic community. We started doing this using focus groups, monthly community meetups with the autistic community, but ultimately really implementing open source development where we have a wide range of autistic contributors in the open source development and in the co-design. And based off their input, all spaces focus has shifted quite a bit. So now it's not just about collecting this data, but also how do we make an impact? We want to allow people to share their techniques with other similar experiences. We want to educate neurotypical people about what their family, friends, family members, friends, colleagues go through, and advise organizations on how they can be more inclusive. With these changed goals and scope comes, of course, an adaptation of the online platform that we've developed. So instead of just collecting the experience because it's about adaptive techniques, people can write a recommendation of what would make a positive difference in their day-to-day -day inclusion. This one is a personal coping strategy. For example, saying, I come in early with a regular desk that I get away from the lights, I wear my headphones, and I try to work at hours where I don't need to take the tube at peak hour. But of course, if we want to share things, now we have a different problem. How do we respectfully and safely and also in a reasonable way share these things? So we've implemented an individual consent. People can share and make ex publicly accessible each individual experience if they want to, either private for research or public. But this leads to the question, if we have public content, how do we moderate public content and experiences based on the internet? You've all seen how not moderation works out there. So based on this, we've co-developed content moderation guidelines that were really co-designed by autistic people, which look quite different from standard social networks because they were designed for the safety of autistic people and not for user engagement. This means that first of all, people cannot comment on each other's experiences. You can share your experiences and your experiences are what they are. There is no debating. That's what would be the problem if we allowed commenting. Also, there's a pre-publication review of experiences. So that means that it's quite conservative, unlike any other social network where you just share your experience, share whatever you want, and then someone might complain. And this leads to moderation. Here, every single experience is, is pre-publication review done according to the guidelines done by the community. There's also a labeling of trigger warnings, which is quite similar to what you find on networks such as Mastodon these days. And last but not least, there are strict guidelines on how you can report on behalf of others, because we do recognize, including our autistic community members, that some autistic people cannot speak for themselves without support, but at the same time, often autistic people are being talked about in very disrespectful ways, because they are being talked about by third parties. So how do we handle this? You can read more about this on our preprint. And last but not least, there is an aspect, of course, to how do we actually do this and what do we learn from it? So doing citizen science allows us to address novel research questions, identify challenges early on, and co-design the appropriate methods with the community. You can read more about all of this on our GitHub repository, where we discuss everything out in the open. 
And thanks to you, to your attention here, but also to all of these community members, which really made this work happen. Thanks again.